Yo, yo. Hello. All right, let's see. Ooh. <clears throat> hey, guys. All right. Uh, I'm looking for a drink. And so water is back here and coffee is over there. Speaking of which, coffee, I think there's not much left in there. Yep, almost done. Might as well kill this off here first. What's up, guys? Uh, let me just... Uh, I was gonna say make some adjustments, but I, think, I guess we're probably okay on everything. How's everything looking, sounding? Everything okay? Yes? Good? Any issues? Um, like, with the stream, I should say. Not uh, any personal issues or anything like that. Uh, you building Gunplus at 3 a.m.? It's not 3 a.m. here. <clears throat> Dump plus dump. What's up? Uh, let's see. Revan. I saw Stingray. Mike. Uh, what's going on? Gundam Build Metaverse. Is that the official YouTube channel of the Gundam Build Metaverse? Commenting here on my live stream. Uh, Mike. All is good, brother. Um, not sure. Uh, <clears throat> all is kind of okay with me. Like um, that's fine. Uh, my wife's having a kind of health issue we're not exactly sure exactly how serious um can be serious <clears throat> serious yes but to what degree serious we're actually not sure yet so not great right now but you know we're doing okay like uh, you know always could be worse right uh i'm waiting for adam to get that cali burn in if that Booked goes well. I'll get that Schwarz. Chris, what? I have so many issues, but your video is fine. Okay, all right. 100% making decisions by this kit based on your build. Okay, Franklin, I'll let you know. Um, but after building what this is, um, what the 25th kit in the line, and uh, did I skip any? I think I've built all of them at least at least 20 of them that I've built in this line, I can say you should A, have a pretty good idea what to expect already. Um, B, in my opinion, <coughs> the line overall has <coughs> been very good. So I think, you know, if you're kind of interested in the design and you're wondering if you, if you really want to pick up the kit or not, I would say, I mean, yeah, go for it. You're going to like the kit. Uh, you missed the area rebuild. Right, yeah, that's a good point. That is one that I skipped. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm. Let's see. Uh, are you going to build the Schwarzette, but then you only use it to have a verbal fight with your older half-brother? Uh, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Sorry, I'm sure that's a reference to something. Uh, top 10... Which for Mercury kits? That would be a good, um, you know, after the Cali Barn, because I'm sure. Are there any more on the way out at the moment? At the moment, I don't think we have any other kits on the way after the Cali Barn, right? And because that's sort of a kind of last one, uh, kind of of the series, it's like one. Of, it's like a final battle one, right? Sort of. So um, that would be a good idea for a video after reviewing the Cali Barn to do something like that. Yeah, top 10 of like my favorites of the series because honestly, they're all, it's very similar to the Witch from, uh, not sorry, it's very similar to the Iron Blood Orphans line in that they're pretty standard and like the pros and cons among the line. Uh, so, I mean, I feel like, yeah, it's very similar in that way. It would be very difficult to have like an objective top 10. I could give you like my top 10 favorites that I've built so far. Um, but, you know, I'm sure there's going to be at least a few comments uh, in the comment section on that saying, like, the rebuild was really good. You should have built it. But I'm sorry, guys. The rebuild design just, just doesn't do it for me. I don't know. Also, hope Mr. Uh, Mrs. Aurelius feels better soon. Thank you, Chris. Um, it's not so much that she's feeling anything bad. Uh, she's not in pain. I mean, it's more, um, 
you know, if and when we find out more about it, I'll tell you guys about it. It's not like uh, it's like uh, I don't want to tell you. It's just, I don't. We don't know what it is yet. So, um, and it's not like I know. Then some people are gonna say like, well, don't feel like you have to tell the world about like what's going on in your personal life. I, you know, I don't feel any obligation to tell you guys about it, but it's just, you know. I don't mind to tell you that way. I mean, you guys who just kind of watch normally, uh, kind of have, you know, just kind of a sense of what's going on in my life and how that may or may not like affect content creation and stuff. I know that I don't owe that to anyone, but you know, I do like to, you know, include you guys. Uh, so anyway, yeah, um, for now, you know, like like I said, uh, nobody's in pain or anything like that. Um, but we're we're figuring out what's going on, and um, hopefully, you know, there's nothing too serious, and everything's just kind of getting uh, going to be all sorted out. And yeah, it'll just be another, another one of those things. So we'll see. Anyway, uh, for now, that's kind of all there is to really say about that. <clears throat> Uh, uh, re sorry, rebuild Ariel just looks like budget double O Gundam to me. Yeah, it's a, it's a mm, weird design. It's a strange mix of design elements that just really don't do it for me. They just don't come together for me. Um, so I'm gonna follow the manual on this build here just to tell you guys a little bit about what's going on with the build here for the moment. I'm gonna follow the manual here, which as usual starts off with the head. So that's where I'm starting. As you guys may know for the Gundam designs, we have stickers here, which have the active and inactive sticker options. I, I always just use the active ones because I feel like that's what probably most people are gonna to wanna to use on their kits. Um, let's see, I just started this and added the Stargazer's Halo to the Schwarzet backpack. That seems like that would be a pretty good fit. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. May she get well soon and maybe get pregnant, Zach Revan. No, uh, nobody's getting pregnant. Uh, that's definitely not happening, at least uh, not from me. Uh, I I had surgery, and so I can't make anybody pregnant anymore. Uh, I had my, what's not, tubes tied. What do you call it? Anyway, a vasectomy. We didn't want to have any more kids, so um, yeah, I did that in Korea. A couple, it's been a couple years now, I guess. Um, so, yep. She sometimes brings it up. She's like, oh, it'd be nice. Just because, like, she's like looking at our two kids that we have and, like, saying, oh, they're so adorable. I love them so much. It'd be, don't you think it'd be nice to maybe have one more? It's like, but then when you think about it, like, okay, uh, how much you know, added work and time, money, effort, everything else that's involved in it from going from one to two, but then going from two to three, it's like, yeah, two is okay. <laughs> so I don't know, you know, for unless, you know, something changed in our life. I mean, well, I kind of just, like I said, I kind of just can't anyway, no matter what we want, but anyway, uh, I guess that it, as we've heard that if you like the pro the surgery is, um, what do I call it? You can go back <laughs> like anyway. Uh, and if you reverse, that's what it is. If you reverse the surgery, like within 10 years, uh, your success rate dr like drops 50%, but it's still possible as I've heard. I don't know if that's, you know, I don't know how accurate that is and if that's something that is even going to apply in our case because like i said i don't think we're gonna change our minds anytime soon uh but you know barring some unforeseen circumstance where i don't know one of us wins the lottery or something i don't think that that's gonna be the case because with two parents having to work and you know not you know, making six digits. I mean, like if we were both making, I don't know, a lot more money than what we make, uh, you know, that would be one thing, but 
anyway, so nope, no more kids <laughs> for right now. And probably not ever. And that's okay. We've got two really, really good ones. We're very lucky uh, to have two great kids. So, yeah. We like them. So I think we're going to keep them. Uh, I bit the bullet and bought an HG Calibar on Amazon US for $60. No, <laughs> why'd you do that? I mean, I guess if you really, really can't wait, I guess. But dude, that's too much to pay for that kit. Speaking of which, the Kelly Barn, I have um, ready to live build. I was thinking about doing a, like a double live build and building both kits at once here in today's live stream, but I wanted to split it up just in case there's people who are you know, only interested in one and not the other. Um, so I think the Kelly Barn live stream will be either tomorrow or Wednesday. So it's ready to go. Um, both kits, I got them ready to go over the weekend. So uh, just have to. Yeah, do it. So we're here doing this one today, and then we'll do the Cali Barn um, very soon. So stay tuned for that. But no, in case any of you guys are watching and wondering, uh, we've not gotten the kit like here at USA Gundam Store. We've not got it in stock. Um, so don't. Uh, I know if some of you guys may have pre-ordered it and you're you're hoping that it arrived in stock, I'm sorry to disappoint you guys. We've not received it yet. As far as I know, I don't think any stores in the US have received it unless they like order directly through like a Japanese distributor or something like that and are able to do that. Uh, in which case they probably didn't get very many of them. Um, more than likely anybody who already has one it's just getting it either directly from a, a shop in Japan, or I, I guess, or, or a friend in Japan or something. Um, who was I just asking about Yunjin? Yeah, Pomelo. Yeah, that's a, a Yunjin sticker on my my boxes, my organizer boxes. Which, again, guys, if you saw the hate comments video, you know, this is not the professional way to build, and any serious Gumpel modeler is not going to use boxes like this, but I do anyway. So, yeah, I have uh, some Genshin stickers on my boxes here. There's uh, Yunjin on that one. There you go. And um, what's her name? <laughs> I was just suddenly drawing a blank. Uh, and whatever. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, in stock soon. What about the Torzet? So I believe they're coming at the same time. I think we just got in the one before that. What was that called? Um, the... Gunvolva? Yeah, we just got that in. And so I think the um, Schwarzet and the Caliburn, I think, are coming together. I, I'm not sure if they're coming together or separate or not, but um, yeah, I would assume that we'll probably get the this one first because if they're coming in, out in order, right? Assuming that you know Bandai is getting them, or Bandai here in the US is getting them from Japan in order, um, we'll get this one first. Uh, or at the same time. Did they release in Japan at the same time or not? I don't remember. I'm not sure. All right, let's see. Um, so, let's get this in here. All right. Uh, that comment absolutely baffled me. I think every pro I see uses similar boxes. I mean, yeah, whether they use them or not, I mean, it's, it was a goofy comment. So I, I had a good laugh. Like I said, I got a good laugh out of that comment. So I was happy to share that with you guys. It was a funny one. And like I said, you know, uh, everyone is a, everyone was a beginner at some point and I'm sure I've said plenty of dumb stuff. Not to say that, that anyone's dumb. That was a little sort of a dumb thing to say. I think we can all agree, but we've all been there uh, at some point. So, you know, you can't blame people. And why are we not putting, okay, this is a very strange construction. Why is this piece here? This is a part for the leg. Why is it here with my pieces for the torso? Okay. Anyway. All right, so we got some more clear parts, a couple more clear parts. This uh, chest is kind of very interesting, this design here. That's in there all the way, right? 
Yeah, hopefully I don't have those backwards. Oh, they are like notched in a certain way. Okay, I think I got that right. Okay. Uh, all right. Yo, how's everyone? Uberzaku, what's up? Uh, Shrekus, Chekus, hello. I think I already saw the hello, but I didn't say your name out loud. Yeah, interesting chest design here for this one. I do like uh, that idea of using the uh, the backpack from the. I want to say Luna Gundam. No, that's not right. That was the what the Luna Gaze Gundam was the Build Fighters variant, Stargazer Gundam. Yeah, uh, I can see where you got the idea now. You know, with like the halo on the head, right? Kind of makes sense, but that was a nice idea. Okay, mm, that's done. What's next? Arms. Let's do it. Gonna be a pretty quick build, probably, as it goes with these HG kits. They're not super complex or anything by any means, and especially the arms and legs. After you build the first one, I find uh, the second one you know, pretty much just falls into place. Because even the even building the first one, I mean, they're pretty quick. Uh, let's see. Just have to make sure like the parts pointed in the right way and all that. 14. Um, Road ZJs. What is your opinion? The best procedure to take care of gates? Uh, most of the time, especially if it's just a kit that I'm just building for review, um, like 99% of the time, I'm really only using the knife. I find that I'm good enough with the knife that that's all I really need for just a simple snap build here just for the review purposes. Uh, when it comes to like actually then wanting to go in and get the kit ready for painting, then I'll go in and do more sanding and and all that. I'll be a bit more um, careful with it. But that's really about it. I mean, I guess a knife and nippers, obviously I'm cutting it off with nippers and then cleaning up the gate with the knife, I should say. Yep. That's all you need. Uh, but then again, you know, I probably, you know, I'm going to get a comment then from somebody telling me that that's not the professional, that's not the Gumpla expert way of doing it. So don't take that to the bank, I guess. All right. There are a fair amount of stickers with this. And I was thinking to myself, like, before like 10 minutes before starting the live stream, I was thinking like, man, I'm probably going to spend a good amount of the stream, just as much time building. I'm probably going to spend the same amount of time uh, just putting on the stickers for this one. It's going to be a lot of just sticker application. Just kind of the way it goes with this. It's it's not uh, anything that's um, a bad thing. I don't think it's all like mostly like under the clear parts and stuff. What I have more of an issue with with this kit is some of the detail lines. So they've placed like these uh, detail um, panel lines there where the seam lines are. And it just makes it look like really lazy uh, seam line um, laziness. I, don't, I, don't know, I guess it's a good word for it. Just like, all right, we know that people from Bandai's perspective, uh, you know, like designing the kits, thinking like, oh, we know that people don't like the seam lines, so we'll just turn all the seam lines into panel lines. And then it just looks like it's like a build where somebody was too lazy to get rid of the seam lines and they just turned them all into panel lines. So yeah, I mean, it's not uh, great. That's probably my biggest issue with the kit at this point. You know, I don't know what else might come up and I can't imagine too much of uh, much consequence will come up other than that, I mean, just from my experience, like I said, building over 20 of these kits so far, uh, I think it's probably going to be a you know, pretty overly positive review from me. But uh, definitely the one thing that I don't like about this one is a couple of those design features. One would be on the shoulder uh, to note them specifically. I think there's one on the uh, lower leg as well, if I remember correctly. But we'll get to there in just a second. Turn the page here. Okay, 
So I had that direction correct. And then I need to put this here. Okay. The other issue that I think we're going to run into here is this part on the elbow piece. Seems like that's going to want to pop off pretty easily, which is going to be annoying. It's got uh, a nice separation here. Let me zoom in, show you guys a little bit here. So on our arm, um, yeah, also, sorry for shaking that a little bit. So here's the, the line I'm talking about here on the shoulder. And it's just this detail line that goes around and then like goes through this kind of like a uh, very also kind of poorly designed vent there on the side of the shoulder as well. Like if you're going in to paint this later on, which would be nice if they gave you a little sticker for it, would have been good, I think. But anyway, just a little black sticker. Hey, you can cut, uh, that's okay. We'll do that later. Um, because on this side, you can see how the panel line goes in and then goes around the side of this little square rectangle detail. So now you have this uh, defined line there, but on the other side, it's just not very sharp uh, in there. So anyway, when you go to paint this, before painting it, what you're probably gonna wanna do is uh, to scribe out the other side and then you're gonna have to glue it on this side or something like that, just so like when you're painting it, panel lining it, whatever, that your panel line liquid is not just running straight into the inside through that tiny gap and then just seeping inside the part. And that's where you get, you know, um, structural issues where you'll, you might find the part cracking or breaking sometime later because of that. Anyway, what I was gonna show you here, aside from that, is when you bend the arm, you have this uh, elbow piece there on the back of the elbow that bends, but I feel like that's maybe going to come off kind of easily. Maybe not. I don't know. Not too bad, but I'm just going to have to be careful handling it. All right. So anyway, which kit from which firm Mercury is your favorite so far? I seen asked. Um, I'd have to go back and check. I mean, the, the different, uh, Demi kits have been really nice just um, because they kind of have a retro scope dogs, uh, you know, Botoms kind of feel to the kits, which is kind of cool and very kind of different, unique uh, feeling from like the Gundams, which all kind of have their own quite unique style to them. Uh, so those have been kind of cool in their own unique way. Uh, the Darabalde has been very cool. That's a really nice unique kit kind of reminds me a lot of the uh, Sinanju in a way I mean aside from the fact that it's bright red but um, just the fact that it's kind of a Ferrari-esque design right because that's like what like a lot of people draw a comparison with the Sinanju that's you know because it has this nice big bright red curved surfaces it's kind of like a Ferrari right as a mobile suit it's kind of similar I guess in that way uh, so that would probably be one of my favorites so far. That one Im immediately comes to mind. Other than that, I'd, I'd have to go back and, and like put a little bit more serious thought into it. But thanks to that suggestion uh, from someone earlier, sorry, I forget who that was, but who suggested doing like a, a top 10, uh, I think I definitely will do that. So I'll check it out. I'll put some more thought into it. I'll put it into a video and share that with you guys um, maybe around the end of this week or something because I want to actually have reviewed uh, all the kits through the Cali Barn. So after having done that, I will, I'll make that video and share my thoughts with you guys. Yeah, uh, Demi Trainer will be good to paint as R2D2. <laughs> That'd be funny, yeah. That's one of those things that I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen that already. I wonder if anyone's done that. It's one of those things that, well, I mean, it wasn't obvious to me, but I could see it as being like obvious to other people in that you would see you know, people doing it. Like, for example, what was it? The uh, Michaelis. I think I was one of the many people who looked at that and kind of it reminded them of, for different reasons, it reminded people of Samus from Metroid. And so, you know, once the kit came out, we saw, I've seen a few custom builds of that kit, uh, like either painted up and or, you know, modified further to, to look like a, 
like a Samus themed build. So something like that, when it's a kind of obvious thing, you usually tend to see it then right away. Somebody will do it or even multiple people will do it. Um, the R2-D2 thing though, I don't think I've seen that. So I don't know, maybe it's not as obvious to everyone, but I can definitely see what you mean. All right, uh, you planning on getting the Lefrith Jew? Um, no, I'm not at the moment. Although I do need to order a couple of other things from P Bandai, so maybe we'll get that at the same time. Um, Michaelis looks like Mirror Knight from Ultra Series. I don't know what that is, but send me a picture or something like that, and I'm just kind of curious. Um, all right. Okay. Legs are next. And yeah, unique leg designs. I do really like the look of the legs. They're very cool, except for the seam line, panel line detail down the front of the shin. But what do you do? Okay, there's this little clear piece. I'm worried about losing that. I'm going to stick that back in the box for the moment until we have this all put together. Saul. Hello, Saul. I think I did finish my coffee, didn't I? Okay. Water it is then. Uh, what are your thoughts on the full mechanics aerial? Yeah, that's another one that I've skipped so far, though I have been thinking about building a full mechanics aerial. Um, because what I think what I would like to do with that would be to do like a custom kit bash, like a SD full mechanics, kind of like sort of what I did with the full, and that wasn't full mechanics, with the rebuild, oh, sorry, no. With the RE100 Zaku 2 FZ, if you guys remember the custom build that I did with that, uh, putting the SD Zaku head on it and like adjusting the proportions of it, customizing that to make a SD slash RE build with the Zaku FZ. I would like to do that with the Gundam Aerial, putting the SD head on the full mechanics body and make some, making some adjustments to the body proportions. The only issue is that I have so many other projects uh, going on at the moment and on my to-do list that feel like uh, I don't want to like just put another project out there that is just gonna like I don't know I have no idea if or when it's ever gonna be finished so kind of don't want to start if I if I know that it's not gonna be something that I'm gonna like do through completion like right away um, that's the only thing that's kind of holding me up from <laughs> wanting to build because otherwise the full mechanics aerial um, you know aside from doing that custom project with it I don't really have that much uh, interest in like building the kit otherwise if I have like nothing planned to like special to actually do with it um, so yeah that's where I'm at on that at the moment I was just planning on skipping it but then I I, I was kind of I'm interested in that idea I want to do that but there's just a lot of other things on the to-do list so I don't know. I'm still wishing and hoping for that uh, for that 36 hour day to roll out, but um, so far I still no luck on getting that. So until we get that 36 hour day, just don't think I'm gonna be able to get to everything that I would like to get to. You know what I mean? What can you do? All right, so looking at this, okay, that's wrong. I was gonna say, looking at that, I think I had the wrong part, but it's actually just holding it backwards, that's all. Uh, I feel you on multiple projects. I'm drowning here. Yeah, Chris, I don't mean, I'm, I don't know how much and what you've got going on. I know you're working on that uh, Exia, right? But I mean, as far as I, see of like what you're working on i mean you usually kind of just sort of working on kind of like one thing at a time i mean maybe you've got a couple of kits on the desk that you're that you're working on but i'm talking like dozens here so <laughs> there's a lot of stuff i've got i've got probably about a dozen like no exaggeration probably about a dozen kits right now that are primed and ready to paint and then I've probably got about a dozen projects that are in some stage of, you know, between being snap built and 
surfacer. So like they're in some, at some point of, you know, customization, either like partially done or totally done. It just needs to be primed or like just started on like the customization. And then there's probably about a dozen other uh, things that are like ideas that I'm kind of about to start or would like to start and then don't even, and just have not started yet. So yeah, I mean, we've all got those. We've all got like the file cabinet in our minds full of, um, of project ideas that we would like to do you know so there's certainly plenty of those let's see what was the one that uh oh yeah doing that doing that um doing that Destroyed Izaku floating in space um, kind of custom build, which was the most recent one that I've done, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. Um, that I did fairly recently with the Master Grade High Mobility type Zaku. That's an example of one that like I've had in my head for years. Probably almost a decade. Because <laughs> I've had that kit since... I think if I remember correctly, I bought that when I lived in Japan. So that would have been 2012, 2013. So yeah. What does that tell you? And anyway, the point is that felt really good to finally get that done, right? A project that I had been wanting to do and like I, I had what I needed for that kit essentially, which is with for that idea, which was, you know, essentially just that kit. Um, but then to actually finally do it, you know, it did feel really good. So um, should probably do that again at some point here, you know, dig deep back in my file cabinet in my mind there and just knock out a project which I've been keeping back there for a long time because it's certainly very, um, very good feeling to get that done you know just like the mechanical build stream yeah that's another one and because those are uh i have all my mechanical kits at home so i see them often <laughs> every time i'm like looking at them thinking you know if i just like if i just you know really got to work on one of those kits you know it wouldn't take you know i wouldn't just spend like a year on it we're talking like i had to spend did i put that sticker upside down no, i didn't okay good um you know if i just like really get to work on that i spend like a month working on that kit on just like any one of them i have a, a few different mechanic or kits uh you know just like spend a month or so working on it and, you know I can get content out of it too. I mean, like make work in progress videos and do all that. And uh, I think, you know, it, it would be content that people would be interested in watching. And like, I know that it, people would like to see it. And it would, I would like to have that feeling of satisfaction of being done with at least one of those kits. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's really hard to then actually just bring myself to actually do it. So I'm thinking like, oh, I got all this other stuff that I'm doing and all this other stuff that I want to work on and all these other kits that are coming out. I can't get uh, all these companies, Bandai, Kotobukiya, uh, and all the rest. Can't get them to slow their pace of model kit releases for me to give me a chance to kind of catch up and catch my breath and work on some of these bigger projects right got so many new kits to check out so yeah it's it's a struggle but at the end of the day yeah i can't uh, i can't complain too much so you know it is what it is have you ever thought to dip your toe into miniature painting not really uh and the main reason would be that just the subject matter of those kits just isn't like appealing to me. Most of that stuff is kind of for the most part like fantasy based, things like that, you know, like 
Nights, which is monsters. It's like science fiction fantasy stuff, which is uh, not my cup of tea. So it's it, a lot of this just because the subject matter is just not appealing to me. And that's kind of the main the main reason. If they came out with miniature stuff, uh, and like when I've been asked, <coughs> when I've been <coughs> sorry, when I've been asked about this before, uh, and I kind of thought about it, like mm, okay, so yeah, the subject matter doesn't appeal to me. But what if like Bandai came out with small scale stuff? Well, I guess they do, kind of right with the architect line. So like if but if Bandai and Kabuki or more companies or whatever came out with miniature kits like that, but like in the style of designs that I was actually interested in, then would I want to build it? Then want to be more inclined to build it? And I don't know, I'm not sure actually. So I don't know if it's like a combination of just uh, the size, the scale, uh, and the subject matter is just kind of all works together to be something that's just not very appealing to me. And, or I don't know what it is, yeah. I mean, because I, um, I do want to work on a. Uh, I've worked on a couple of like mini, like small scale Gundam kits before, and I've been wanting to work on a couple more. Speaking of like ideas that I have in the works, like planned build ideas in the queue, one of which uh, you, some of you guys may remember from like when I first moved. Uh, I asked you guys if anybody had any of those like uh, mini Gumpla kits that they were willing to get rid of. And uh, I, I bought a few from a few people or traded and uh, even a few people just like sent me a couple, which was awesome. And I haven't done anything with them. And there's, they're right up here on my shelf. And every time I see how like, I feel bad, I'm like, yeah, I really wanted to work some more on those mini Gumpla kits. And like I, I bought some, I think traded for some. And then someone, some people just sent me some. I haven't done anything with them and like I feel terrible but it's just one of those things like I mean there's just not enough time to do everything that I want you know everything at once um, so yeah just have to live with that but anyway uh, so I mean those kits yeah I would kind of like to work on those so I think when it comes to miniature painting mostly it's just the subject matter uh, most of what's out and available is just not really of interest to me <clears throat> I'm bored, but I'm not mini painting bored. <laughs> Mr. Bobobo said, yeah, I, I can understand that. Uh, Mercenary, what's up? By the way, you said you ordered a couple of Piva Night kits. What kits uh, did you buy and will you receive them? Um, so what I was mentioning a few minutes ago about Piva I said there's a couple of Piva Night kits that I am meaning to order. So there's a few on there that I've not ordered yet, but that I want to order. One of them that I'm thinking about is the Master Grade Johnny Ridden's Gelgoog. I'm thinking if I want to get that or not because uh, I love the Master Grade Gelgoog 2.0. Uh, I love the high mobility type backpack on that. I And that's basically where the appeal of that kit ends for me because I don't really care that much for the red. You know, if I were to ever get around to repainting that kit, I would repaint in a different color anyway, so the red doesn't matter. Uh, the decals also don't matter because they're just Johnny Ridden decals, which I already have Johnny Ridden decals, which I don't know if I will, you know, will ever use. And I have plenty of other decals, so I just don't really care about the, the decals for that kit. And then it does have um, custom weapons. It has like the different, the bazooka, the Rakuten bazooka, and then like the shore bazooka, which I'm also not that big of a fan of the weapons um, for that, like the Johnny Ridden's Gelgoog bazooka. It's like that, like short barrel bazooka i just don't really like that either so i'm not on the fence if i really want to get that kit or not i do love the gelgu but i just don't know if i really i really really want that one or not uh what were some of the other ones let me refresh my memory here we'll take a break because i kind of put this backpack together here with one hand let me see because i had them open here what were some of the ones i was considering that was one that i was considering uh where'd it go okay um the this one rico's this one rico's zaku which again 
It's just an HG Zaku, so as far as the actual kit goes, there's nothing interesting about it. It's just re repainted, which again, I could just repaint it a Zaku in those colors if I really wanted one. So, but I just, I like it just for the fact that it's kind of exclusive, right? It's just more like a collector's item kind of thing. And then, so I'm just on the fence. It's like, do I really want to pay $30 for a just like collector's item Zaku 2 in an ugly color scheme, which is like, it's kind of so bad it's good. One of those things, like it's, it's the color scheme is, is so ugly that it's sort of cool. There, you guys saw that, that one, yeah. Uh, D'Angelo, by the way, money jump scare. Thank you, D'Angelo, thank you as always uh, for that. The other one is the part set two for the scope dog. Uh, for the scope dog kit which comes with like the extra weapons and the standing pilot figure for the scope dog kit i think that one i probably will go ahead and order even that's twenty dollars for that is pretty high for like i mean that should be like twelve dollars to be honest for a weapon set and like one little 135th scale figure right i think they're 135th scale right i believe so so yeah, that and this high mobility type uh, land battle, Gogo, the Selma one. I did order the other one. I think there's been three different versions now, right? And I think I have one of them on order, one of them I missed, and I guess maybe when it comes back around, I'm gonna order that one maybe as well. This Selma one, I've I'm not ordered yet, but again, the reason why I'm kind of on the fence is because I know I already have one on order. This one is just a different version of that. So I'm just kind of thinking, you know, how much, because I already have a lot of HD The Origin Zaku kits, <laughs> so, like, so many other different variations and everything. So just another one of those situations where do I really want another one of these or not? I have a lot of model kits. So kind of at that point where, um, you know, it's a combination of I want to and need to be a little bit discretionary when it comes to just buying stuff, especially when it's stuff like that, like kind of all those things that I was just talking about, which are kind of on my list of kits that I'm considering at the moment. Um, the big reason why they've all just, they're all just, you know, being considered is because they're ba basically just recolors, which, you know, to the point of, uh, P Bandai. That's what P Bandai is for. I think a lot of us would agree. Like, you know, it, it would be nice if that's all that P Bandai was basically limited to was just recolors like that, not stuff like the Rose Gundam or the Wound War and stuff like that, right? So, um, speaking of that, I did just get the Rose Gundam uh, last week. I got the Rose Gundam and the Jim Spartan from P Bandai last week. They're over there, so I will build and review those for you guys soon. Uh, on the notes of P Bandai. So anyway, yep, that's what's going on with that. Uh, aside from these guys, I can show you guys this too. I'll show you here in a minute. Let me just get this this weapon a little bit underway here. Uh, I just love saying the word Gelgoog. Yeah, I can relate, Sean. It's a it's a good one. Is dry brush palette available at USA Gundam? I don't dry brush palette. I'm not sure if we have anything like that. Not that I'm aware of, but we have a lot of stuff that I'm not aware of. There's, we just have a lot of stuff. So, I um, mean, you can check. I don't know of any offhand. I wonder where the name Gelgoog comes from. What's the inspiration? Yeah, it would be kind of interesting to know. I mean, same with like the Zagok and the Dom and even the Zaku or any of it really. I get where Gundam comes from. I think it, it's what it's a combination of gun, obviously, is in gun and with the dam. I remember what is it? No, I don't remember. You guys can tell me, but any opinion on the MG Eco Plus? Uh, I'm not sure what is coming out as an Eco Plus kit. Let's see. Um, Ecopla in general, I mean, it's a kind of sort of interesting kind of idea. I don't know. I'm not really that 
interested in it. So again, I think for the most part, most of the Ecoplast stuff is like mostly recolored or, or something, right? I mean, I don't know. I've not seen anything about it that was particularly interesting of what's been released so far. Uh, we know the Zaku is named after a weak fish. Oh, really? No, I didn't. I don't think that I've ever heard that before. So that's interesting. I mean, I'm sure a lot of it is all like some Japanese. Uh, it's like Japanese wordplay kind of stuff, right? Uh, do you know when the third party Thor uh, will be in stock again at US Economic Store. I'm not sure because we got a lot of that kit. When it was delivered, it was like um, it was like six or seven pallets of that kit. If not more. There was a lot. And yeah, I was really surprised when I asked Adam about it like a couple days later. Um, because I was gonna post something uh, on our social media about that about having that kit in stock. He's like, Yeah, those are already all sold. What? <laughs> really? So uh, yeah, those were gone pretty fast. I don't believe that we have any more in stock here. I think we may have like one or two in the storefront. Um, but as far as like what's online, I think, yeah, I think they're all sold out. Uh, as far as when we're going to get any more, I would not be able to answer that for you. I don't know if we will get any more. Um, but if you ask that, I mean, if you, well, I was going to say if you email customer service, they might be able to answer that for you, but they probably don't know either. Um, I would have to just ask Adam. So um, send me, who was it that was asking that about the Thor kit? Let me see. Uh, Mehmet. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mehmet, send me a message as a reminder because Adam's not here right now. Um, but I will ask him, send me a message. And I'll ask him if he knows if we are going to be getting any more. I can tell you that if we are, I don't. We we surely don't know when we're going to we're going to be getting them because um, I can give you like a rough estimate. But stuff like that that comes from China, how it goes is that we get a notification that it left China, and then sometime later it just arrives here. We don't ever have any kind of idea about where it is anywhere in between there. So. Um, it's hard to say other than, you know, if it left China, then we know it's on the way at some point, but if it hasn't left China yet, and I know like, for example, like if Adam, if I ask him and he says, uh, yeah, they're going to be producing some more of that kit, you know, like next quarter, I can, I can give you that information. I can pass that along to you, but I have a feeling that it's probably not going to be, you know, don't expect too much more than a vague answer, either that, or maybe he'll, he'll come back and, and tell me like, yeah, we're expecting another, you know, two pallets of those to come in next week. I don't know what he's gonna say, but send me your, uh, send me a message just as a reminder and I'll ask. It's the best I can do for you. Uh, I think Tomino was just goofing around when he names the mobile suits, uh, but hey, it worked though. I mean, maybe it is. What's a goof? What's uh what's a goof between friends? Oh, speaking of goofing around, I see what you did there. Uh but yeah, I mean there's a lot of I think there's a lot of inside joke stuff and not like inside joke, but I mean like unless you're uh, like very fluent in Japanese or you know just you follow that stuff pretty closely. I think there's a lot of things that kind of just kind of go over our heads as Westerners that we don't, we just don't get the reference because they're like deep references like within Japanese culture and just, you just wouldn't get it unless, unless you're like a part of that or unless you're following, uh, you know, somebody who figures it out, I guess, right? So. Some of that stuff is known, some of it's unknown. But 3-6 Mafia is the most known unknown. So at least we can we can say that. 
with certainty. These stickers, by the way, are the plastic stickers. If you guys hadn't seen, this kit does come with these plastic stickers, which if you've not seen them in other kits, they're basically like uh, very thick stickers because it's like a foil sticker printed on the backside of a thin piece of plastic, essentially. So they're kind of cool. The good, the nice thing about them is that they give the illusion of like an actual plastic part rather than just a sticker on top of a plastic part kind of thing. Uh, Geek Eric, you are late for this. We're almost done, but that's okay. You can watch the playback or just kind of Maybe you're more lucky than unlucky in that you're gonna you're gonna get the final thoughts without actually having to watch the full build. <laughs> so maybe it worked out in your favor in that way. But yeah, just putting the last of the these stickers on, and then I'm noticing on the other sticker sheet there's a few more things that I think I either missed somewhere along the way or they go somewhere here. They go on here at the end somewhere. I need to figure out where I need to put them. Let me see. They don't go anywhere on the legs or the waist section, so we can rule that out. You can just do like a process of elimination here, but let me just put this together here first. So um, we've got, let's see, this part goes like this and like this. That floats into here. uh the black uh let's see that black piece would be what that uh that that back piece would be really cool to kit bash with back piece back piece i don't know eh? hmm? what uh beam saber looking clean always nice to not see uh sb13 runner oh yeah yeah it is always nice when we see something a little different for the beam saber effect. That's another thing that, uh, you know, I, if, you know, it's not a, a huge complaint, but I think if you're going to make complaints about uh, Bandai's releases, that was times two, wasn't it? Okay. Um, that's one thing that I think is, you know, a fair enough complaint is, you know, the beam saber effects that we get are nice it would also be kind of nice to get them like more suit specific more often like uh beam effects that match that specific kit rather than just being kind of generic ones all the time so i feel you on that okay and here okay so that is it that should clip together a little bit yep there we go that fits like that. Very unique and interesting weapon. I think this is definitely, it's kind of interesting how there's so much gimmick for this kit built into this, <laughs> into the weapon. Uh, and there's a lot of these like extra little attachment pieces for it. A lot of ways that you can choose here for the assembly, uh, just to kind of show you guys here. Let me just put this stuff aside real quick. Uh, hang on. Make sure I don't lose any of these small little pieces here, which are basically just like three millimeter male to male pegs. Very easy thing to make yourself if you happen to lose them. Oh, and then I need to figure out where those last couple of stickers go. But anyway, um, if you look here at the manual, uh, here, uh, there you go. So you can build it uh, like this, or this, or this, or this, which does, okay, it's like, here they're mounted on like towards the back skirt, and here they're mounted like up higher on the backpack. So yeah, uh, a number of different mounting options here for these. Mm -hmm. Final, Final Fantasy looking sword, yeah. It is kind of, right? So let's, now that we've got that, let me take a look here. 
see if I can deduce where these couple... Oh, okay, so I can see those ones definitely go on the arms. And I think that's it. Actually, I think those are the only parts that I missed. Uh, just looking at the black ones, thinking I've missed where those black stickers go. The black stickers are just the optional stickers for other areas if you didn't want to use the active stickers here. Is active and inactive the right wording for that? That's what I kind of just generally use for this kind of sticker option. But having not yet watched Witch from Mercury, which I am planning on watching now that they're uh, putting the episodes on Gundam Info, I am planning on actually watching this series now. Um, just actually start watching this series. Uh, but those of you guys who have been watching this series, is that, a, is that an acceptable terminology uh, in your guys' opinion, to say active and inactive for those uh, stickers on that, I guess if I just probably I don't even need to see I don't need to see the series. I could just read the manual. It probably says somewhere in here. Like, let's see, uh, blah, 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 maintains the offensive capabilities. Um, I don't know. It probably says in here. If I were to actually just take the time to read the manual, it's another one of those things that uh, if I if I were uh, better at what I do, I would actually read the manuals every so often. I just very rarely do that. But I should do that like, I don't know. I guess, I don't know. I was going to say like during the review at the very least or something, but. Uh, Mercenary said, I wasn't impressed with the series after I watched the whole thing. Um, yeah. Most of what I've heard and seen online is that, for the most part, I think people were generally kind of okay with the series. I mean, it seemed like a lot of people liked the series. When it came to the end, I mean, I, I think from what I saw online was that, uh, I don't know, the, the ending to anything is hard. It's all, you know, that's why there is an expression, stick the landing, right? Because the landing's difficult on anything. Where it's going to end is difficult. Um, that's what happened with me and Iron Blood Orphans. I watched Iron Blood Orphans all the way up until the last couple episodes, and I've never finished the series. I've never finished like the last three episodes of the series, just because it's like at that point I was like, yeah, okay, just kind of done at this point. I know they're going into the final battle, and then you know whatever else after that. Uh, but. I don't know. Uh, I think, you know, it seems like there, at the very least, there's been a lot of interest in the series. So I think it's, you know, worth going to be worth a watch uh, for me. You know, either way, I mean, just as a uh, Gundam and Gunpla fan and doing this, you know, I think it's probably better that I have at least seen the series. Uh, so I want to watch it. And, you know, if I don't finish it, you know, we'll see. Uh, but. <clears throat> Like, there was a lot of, for me, there was, for, like, uh, Reconquista and G, there was a lot of redeeming factors about the animation itself. But, yeah, I still only got um, 13, 14, 15 episodes into the series and just stopped watching it. I didn't make, like, a conscious decision, like, I'm done with this series. I just uh, didn't watch it and then just never went and finished it. So, uh, anyway... Not getting too much into the animation, just do want to wrap up the stream here for today, guys. Very cool build. There's a couple of things about the design that I'm not too sold on, but overall, I think it is a pretty cool... I mean, actually having it built and seeing it here in person, it's one of those situations where I wasn't too sold on the design, but seeing it here in hand and having it in hand uh, definitely makes me have a little bit more appreciation for the design, I think. I think it is uh, kind of cool looking, more so than I did before having built it, if that makes sense. So um, <laughs> we'll see how that goes once I actually get into the review of it. But so far, I do like it. It is pretty cool. So I will work on the review for this guy and I will um, live build the Calibarn either tomorrow or Wednesday. So we'll just kind of see how that goes. Um, but watch out for that. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out today in the middle of this Monday afternoon. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Um, hopefully you have some cool stuff to look forward to this coming week. I uh, just got a lot of stuff to work on. 
uh, Cali, this and the Cali Barn being one of them. And then, yeah, I will definitely take up uh, the idea that was mentioned earlier about making a, like, my top 10 favorite HG, which for Mercury kits, I think that'll be a, a good video. So really appreciate that video suggestion. That's the kind of thing that, you know, those type of videos, just like speaking candidly with you guys, that's the type of video that uh, performs really, really well. <laughs> and, it, and it's kind of funny because those type of videos are A, really easy to make <laughs> because I basically just have to sit there and talk to you guys for like 10 minutes. Uh, and then they're, you know, pretty easy to edit and everything like that. There's not a whole lot of like variety of different shots or anything like that. I mean, they're uh, much easier than even just like a kit review or something. And then they usually get like 10 times the amount of views. So uh, videos like that, you know, um, just a heads up uh, as to, you know, why you know, I mean, they're, they're just interesting. I mean, they're good for uh, content creators like me and other content creators who make that type of video because the, those videos do really well. Uh, but I mean, in the greater scheme of things, they are just interesting videos. I mean, the, um, it's stuff that, I mean, the reason why they do so well is because it's content that you guys are interested in seeing. Uh, people like to see that and people like to talk about it. And you know, they usually get you know, plenty of comments, you know, agreeing and disagreeing, people giving their own thoughts about, uh, um, you know, what they think about the kits and all that. So uh, anything that uh, drives community conversation, as long as it's, you know, in a generally positive and construction way, constructive way, I think is a good thing. So, I mean, if it just keeps the conversation going, then it's good. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, so I will definitely... Uh, follow up on that idea and if you guys have any other kind of similar ideas anything that you would like to see you know like any kind of yeah top 10 top 5 you know whatever if it's something that's of interest to me I, I definitely wouldn't mind doing it like if somebody asked me like what's your top 10 Gundam 00 mobile suit designs that would be another one that would be like I'm just not really kind of that interested in making a video like that but the HG Witch for Mercury kits are something that I've recently been building a lot of, so it's you know very relevant for me, and I have enjoyed the series so far. So that's something that I'm happy to, to talk up more about. Um, not that I have anything against Double O, but like asking me something like that, just like my favorite mobile suit designs from a series that came out 20 years ago, is less interesting. You know what I mean? Uh, but anyway, okay. Uh, let's see. Just want to check the last couple of comments here from you guys. You should make your favorite kits of every faction top five every faction yeah something like that right uh before you go out what gumpla you wouldn't recommend uh but you enjoy it uh that's a really good question revan i'll answer this uh before we leave here for today that i really like but i wouldn't recommend mm, that's a good one i'll have to think about it because i've certainly had that um I've certainly had those build experiences where like, I know, like, I really liked it, but I know that, you know, for most people, it's not something that I would really recommend. I think that it looks cool. Um, it's one of those things where I feel that more often, a lot of times, like with stuff like the frame arms kits, just because I know that if you have a kit that's like a little bit touchy, like maybe needs a little bit more love. I don't mind that as being too much of a negative for the kit, but I know a lot of people do. So like, for example, I'll like build a frame arms kit where I love the design. I think the design is super cool. It's a really great looking kit, but I know that, you know, maybe if it's got some weak points here or there, that that's going to be something that I would make me, you know, not necessarily recommend it to everyone, but um, that type of thing, if that makes sense. Uh, other than that, I'll have to think about it. I don't know. Nothing else is really coming to mind, but I know I have felt that. And anyway, we'll see. Uh, HG is the Gawk experiment. Yeah, I've not ever built that kit, actually, but I've thought about getting that kit many, many, many times. So probably at some point I will get the Zigok E uh, because it's a quite interesting design. I do really, really like it. But uh, the Full Armor Thunderbolt, mm, I would recommend it. It's not one that I wouldn't recommend. The MG Unicorn as well. Uh, the MG Unicorn Verka, I guess. Yeah. Uh, 
I would recommend like the OVA unicorn. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend the Verka, but I do like it. Yes, <laughs> but they're basically the reason that I like the Verka is just because I like the dude, the design and the proportions of the Master Grade, which are not changed between the two different versions. It's only kind of mostly stuff on the inside that's changed. So I wouldn't recommend that particular version, but I like them both. Big Zam, 1 to 550 scale. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested to see. I know Mafu is working on one of those uh, at the moment. Um, I would love to see a either HG. I would like to see the HG um, full mechanics. No, it's not the HG mechanics. Uh, what is it? Is that what it is? HG mechanics? Is that right? Uh, that doesn't I think that's right, but it doesn't sound right. Anyway, the line of mobile armor that was only for Gundam, uh, Gundam 0080, three, it seems. Um, anyway, I would like to see the return of that line and maybe get like a 1550 scale Big Zam or uh, just a full on HGUC Big Zam. I think Bandai's made large HGUC kits before, they can do it again for the Big Zam. The Big Zam is such a classic and like, well, easily recognizable and like popular design from the original series. There's no reason not to make it. An HGC big exam, in my opinion, but I don't know if and when that's ever going to actually happen. Okay, uh, are you going to live build the RG Epion when it comes out? Yes, most probably, definitely. Um, I finished it and took pictures uh, and broke a hip joint. Oh no, okay, I'll check the Discord, Mafu. I don't know if I saw pictures of it finished, um, so I'll check that on Discord. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon for the Calibarn live build, and until then, have a great day. See you guys later. Bye.